So <laughs> I think the, the one, yeah, I think I'm, I guess in general public, they look at it, it's like, well, you do porn, you do porn. So therefore, you know, like you must love everyone or you're nymphomaniac. In so, some no, ways. you're so, not. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, most of the people don't, 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 they're not interested in no, you know? They, yes. A lot of times they just want to put you in the basket, be like, you're this kind of type of person, yes. and, you know, like. You must be doing drugs, you must be doing alcohol yes. and all the jazz, you know. It's like, I met a lot of level-headed people that don't mm-hmm. drink, smoke and like yeah. go to gym all the time, yes. you know. It's like, it's not like 90s where it's like all party and a bunch of cocaine, you know. It's like... Yeah, I think people think that you come to set and there are drugs and yeah. alcohol and yeah. music and everyone's smoking yeah. and then, yeah, come on, let's... <laughs> like, I guess, it's not like that. You know, four or five years ago before I get into it, I suppose I had some kind of fantasy and ideas about how it looks as well right but yeah. now being on a set it's kind of like you see how technical and yes. like you know the sex is maybe like the 15 to 20 percent but then it's also like mm-hmm. the, the the image itself the, the the light you know like then the marketing the uploading yeah. the yeah, editing you know it's like yes it's a lot of like layers to the onion you yeah know? versus just like oh yeah we just go on a set get a bunch of fucking cocaine and then like, <laughs> let's get going you know yeah like, i uh yeah i i, I did the, public. did the sex um, in your job kind of had uh, like influence on your sex life oh, in, my, in private? In my yes. I mean, you know, like I, I honestly, like last five years I was with somebody, so I only had sex on set. And then, mm-hmm. you know, when we were swinging, I usually like let her do her thing mm-hmm. and I kind of like have sex with her. Yeah. So I gotta say, like, I didn't like have much sex of camera, you know, mm-hmm. and definitely not with people that are not in industry, you know. Yeah. So, did it change? Yeah, drastically. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. like the people that you're having sex with on camera are definitely better at it, you know? <laughs> I mean, come on, like, you know, when you do something, ev- not every day, but like often, yeah. you get better at it. Yes. It's like, you know, if you play soccer or cooking or whatever, <laughs> you know? So, yes, it's, it's more enjoyable to do it with people that are clean and tested and yeah. hot, you know? Like, yeah. but when I was on Tinder and Bumble, it was always like, you know, girls look for the relationships and like, yeah, I'm look kind of like, well, I, I might be interested in a relationship, but if you don't have sex, how the fuck I know if you want to be in a relationship with yeah, you, you know? Yes, exactly. Because it's like, well, we can have sex after like a few dates and you're like, oh. dude, like, okay, we can spend here like, ten, you know, 10, 20, 30 hours, whatever, check your boxes. But then it's like, you know, in a shitty way, it's kind of like, if you don't test drive the car, how the fuck are you buying it? Yes, that's what I, mean? I say. So it's kind of like, okay, if, if we may have, I may connect with you in a mental level, but it's like, if I'm not physically enjoying it or yeah. like, there's something about you, it's like, damn, I don't know if, like, we're going to stay together. It must yeah. be a really strong bond. Yeah. So, you know, I have a buddy of mine, and he's been with a girl for four years, and we were drinking and talk about stuff, and he's like, my girlfriend doesn't like to have sex at all. What? And I said, really? Like, you know, and at all? He's like, I think she's a virgin. And I'm like, how long have you guys been together? He's like, four years. Oh, my God. I was God. like, damn, bro. Like, you know, like, don't you miss it? Yes. And he said, well, she'd be okay if I fuck other girls. Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, did you think about it? And he's like, yeah, but I, I swipe on a Tinder and I'm like, bro, it's, you know, people don't understand like getting the, doing the dating life is so much work. Yes. And, you know, I mean, for guys and for girls too, right? Yeah. For girls, it's definitely like putting the makeup, you know, taking the time or doing all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Then breaking the eyes, going on a second date, third date. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I wasn't the type of person that was like, I'm going to like, you know, like one night stand and I lose you. Mm-hmm. I was more of the person like if we click and I like you, we kind of keep in touch. But, mm-hmm. you know, maybe we'd be like a friends with benefits. Yeah. But then if if it, it always comes down to, hey, do you want to be together? Yes. Eventually, if yeah. they like you and you go like, well, no, but I enjoy having sex with you and mm-hmm. hang out. Yeah. And they're like, well, I'm looking for a boyfriend. And then it always kind of vanished, mm-hmm. you know, and yes. like, and then maybe like a year later they hit you up. It's like, hey, I'm single again, you know. <laughs> And you're like, it's always like still, that. I'm still available if you're yeah. into it, you know. But yes. I wasn't like type of person that would be like, you know, demeaning to girls or like just like use you them and lose like them. You don't seem like that, know? yes. Yeah, but you know, that when you get in a relationship and then you have these like six or seven friends, mm-hmm. yeah, and you're with a new person, sometimes you don't know how long you're gonna be with them, so you don't want to cut all these friends because yes. you have this new person. Mm-hmm. But then. You know, like from the experience, I wish I got everyone over when I started a new relationship, yeah, you know? Yeah. Because then it was like, my partner was like, why is these people still t- texting you and talking to mm-hmm. you? And they're like, well, fuck, you know, like they're probably still single. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I took a t- I took a too long of a time to cut them all off and I mm-hmm. was pissing her off for sure. Oh. But yeah, so, you know, like, but again, like, I didn't know if you're going to be together for one more two months or three months. You yeah, know? exactly. So, I don't know. I, I like porn, you know, and like creating and collaborating with people because I, 
I like the idea of that, like, we making money from nothing, you know? Yeah. So you show up and I show up and we make something happen. Yes. It's almost like singing a song or creating, yeah. like, any other content for YouTube or TikTok, yeah. you know? It's kind of like, you know, um, just creating this kind of content. But, like, yeah, I do, would I, would I want to, like, would I enjoy to do podcasts? Maybe. But do yeah. I enjoy more having sex on camera? Yeah. It's more yes. me, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's more yeah. me. But I'm just saying... Yeah, for the guys to start doing this industry, it's kind of hard, you know. Yes. It's like the the pressure from the directors, the producers, yeah. the, the 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 pressure from own yourself, you yes. know. Like, I mean, you know, I get people asking me all the time. It's like, hey, how do I get into industry? How do I get into industry? And I just tell them straight up. It's like, are you willing to like you know pump your dick with like injections and stuff? Uh -huh. and like, Who are you talking about? And I'm yeah. like. Do some research, buddy. You know what I mean? That is exactly what I also wanted to ask because uh, I asked on Twitter what should I ask in the interviews and one guy said I should ask if in Europe the guys are taking like a bunch of Viagra mm -hmm. like in Vibrant America. Cialis. Yes. Oh, wow. And I'm like, well, I, mean, I just know of injections, <laughs> but I don't know if we are supposed to okay. talk about that. I don't know. I don't know. Like, like, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil it for people, but like, yeah, do it. you know, it's <laughs> spoil like... Spoil away. When you go, when you have a sex with girl, it's all dark and you're in a room and you're <laughs> intimate or maybe one or light or some normal stuff. And it's not like you're, there's like six lights and other five dudes staring at you and be like, okay, fuck her. And then like, yeah. she might not be into you at all, especially on a set. So yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, you know, Viagra and Cialis came around in 90s or early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Then Papaverin or whatever the injections are came in. Yeah. And You know, I feel like the expectations of the directors and producers got so high. Yes, because it was you just have like, to take okay, so now we don't have to wait for you to get there or like yes. the girl help you and stuff. Now you just inject it and it stays hard for eight hours. Yes. Therefore, it's like, oh, you, I, I'm gonna work with this guy because he's always reliable. Yeah. I don't have to wait for it. Yes. It's kind of like, it's almost like social economical, right? It's mm -hmm. kind of like, I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna hire this guy because he's 100%. Yes. And even, you can shoot more scenes at more one day, yes, yeah. because so, it's quicker. Yeah, you know, I would say like 95% of, maybe 90% of guys definitely shoot up when they go on professional sets. Yeah. When shooting the content traits at home yes. and doing these collabs, it's less pressure. Exactly, you know? yes, But, yes. You know, when I hear from people that they are clean, mm -hmm. I know they're liars. Yeah. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? It's like when somebody's like, <laughs> okay, so you're 40 plus, but you're totally clean, no Viagra, no Sally's, no nothing. I'm like, mm -hmm, sure, sure. Because sure you are, buddy. I think, <laughs> I don't know why like normal people that are not in the industry judge things like that mm -hmm. because I think you don't know how it is on set. It, because when men masturbate, they're watching the porn and they're like, oh, I'm so rock hard, I would be so good at this, you know, and da, da, yeah. da. but it's like, it's not you're not in an environment at home with, yes. in your own comfort, like yes. there's nobody watching nothing. You're in an unusual situation where people are like, you know, it's a little deviant in some ways, so like ex, um, exhibitionism, yes. right? If you are exhibitionist, yeah, it great. might be easier, yeah. you know? But if you're not, then you're a more private person, you do this for a living and stuff. It's like, yeah. you better be able to mentally get there. And then also, if it doesn't go your way, how do you get there? Yes. You know what yes. I mean? It's just like, yeah, I mean, you know, I shot like five, six hundred scenes. Sometimes yeah. you jam with people at the better, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't, you know, but I always finished, you know? Yeah. I mean, because for me, it's like, I can get off the camera, get there, yeah. get back there, yeah. and then edit it and make it look like it was smooth. You know <laughs> yeah. What I mean, But, you know, I'm like, I'm sure there, there's, you know, I have friends that like, they just cut the scenes so as like, I just can't get their mental and you know, yeah, yeah, do it, you yeah. know? So I'm just like, you know, like, I never want to be in a position, you know, where we don't finish the scene because I'm yeah. like, even if you have a 10 minutes or, mm -hmm. you know, some, you can extend yeah. it somehow, yes. you know, and do some tricks in editing. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's a pressure, you know? Yeah. I mean, for girls, it's like, it's hard as well because it's mm -hmm. like, makeup, hair, wear and tear, you know, like mentally people judge you and stuff. But for yeah. guys, it's also like you yes. know, pills, injections. Yeah. And then fucking, you know, I feel like once you get into the industry, people think you're like a, almost like a predator because you're so deviant in your head. That you're like, <laughs> you're willing to sacrifice your life for this. You know what I mean? Yes. Because it's like when I, it's, it's interesting because when I was model for 15 years, it was such a like higher status that yeah. when I talked to about it, people, they were so interested and so positive, you know, yeah, and they're like, they're oh, like, God, you're oh a model. what brands did you work for? It's yeah. so cool and stuff, you know, especially in like places like LA that are super superficial, yes. you know, but when I do like, oh, I do porn, and they're like, oh, fuck, you, you, you also like kill people? You know? like, yeah, 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 exactly. Like, you're oh, like, oh my God, so, okay, 
I don't want to hang out with you. Yeah, Bye. But it's kind of like you know, I don't do it out of desperation. I do it because yeah. I choose to yes, do it. Yes, you know exactly. What I mean? And it's I think that's a two type of people in this too, right? Because yeah. If you're always struggling for money and always have to do more and more, you might have like your agent whispering you should take the scene yes. and that and. You know, places like Los Angeles, like you need like, you know, six, seven, eight, ten thousand a month. So even if you do ten yeah. scenes, you make ten K. Yeah. And ten K disappear like nothing. Of course, you know? yes. So to to have girls not doing the content trades and working on their brand yeah. without their agents mm-hmm. and stuff, mm-hmm. to me it's like wow, you're missing a lot of like you're missing the trend, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. the trend is get the exposure from the brands but yes. bring them back to your yes. sites you know? exactly the big girls use it for you way. yeah yes. or you know use use the porn hub you know because yes it's like youtube for it right yeah and it's like when people just want to be like no i'm just waiting for my agent to book me scenes i'm just like geez dude like you, you know, can't wait for anything in life you just have to make it happen right and also like you know when i started going to prague like three year or four years ago mm-hmm. there's probably like two or three girls that had all fans yeah you know now it's more now everyone like, yeah, yeah. After Corona, you know, yeah. like more people get into yeah. get on it and started shooting more. But I, yeah. I said, met many girls trying to explain them the clip size, the OnlyFans, the Pornhouse. Be like, this is your brand. This is your brand. Make money with your boyfriend. Yes. Find a penis and like just shoot a bunch <laughs> of videos and make money. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, you're creating money from like nothing. Like, I mean, yeah, there's not many jobs that you can just like invest your time and and, and become like wealthy out of it. You yeah, know what I mean, like you can start a business, but it's again like investment of time. It is kind of a business. You know? Yeah, like, because for me it was when I started porn, I was still a secretary mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. a normal office. Mm-hmm. I had a normal office job. And I woke up at seven, got at eight to my job, came home every day at seven in the evening. Yeah, twelve hour yeah, job. Yeah. Went uh, to the gym, cooked something, and then I made That's myself up. pretty for yeah. webcam. Oh wow! And also did some solo videos, like uh, in the weekend when I had time. Yeah. And then I decided, like after one or two months in porn, I was like. You know what? If I invest a hundred percent in this business, but not just fifty percent because I'm too tired of yeah, my normal yeah, yeah. job. It's unsustainable like that. Yeah, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. And then I quit my job and did just porn and webcam and my amateur stuff in the beginning and it was the best decision yeah, ever. Yeah, you know, many people yes. stay like that. They stay, they open on the fans, they do faceless stuff. Yes. You know, like they, they do faceless, faceless for a few months, then they start seeing the money. Yeah. They might work at the gym or they might work at some other job yes. and then be like, okay, well, f- fuck, I make this much money. I wonder if I invest my full time into it like and started doing it. I mean, like, Damn, you know, you're trading your time, 12 hours to work for somebody or like, yes, you know. to somebody, but you can do it for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, my friends from my hometown, they all work in like some factory or some jobs that they didn't really enjoy that much, you yeah. know. And I'm like, dude, okay, so you're going to be doing this for next 10 years yes. or 20 years and you retire one day. The most important thing that you're trading in is your time, you yes. know. And it's like, even the work that we do, I, I you know, I think it's still work. You still have to figure out, like, you know, the the, the role plays and the, the mm-hmm. pictures and how to edit it and, yeah. like, upload it and sell it. Like, you still have to do things around the clock, but you're on your own time, you know. Yes. And it's like... If you don't if you don't work for a week, you can still have platforms that generate income, you know. Yeah. So it is kind of like self employment and you have to be a little more entrepreneur. Yeah. But I mean, you know, getting paid and and you will never get rich like that, you know? Yeah. Like going to the, going to work for somebody and from nine to five paychecks. no one got yeah, rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they call it just over broke job. Just over broke, <laughs> yes. That's about it. But you're coming from the you know place where you work twelve hours and then you you know still push it and do that. Yes. It's like wow, you know that's cool because yeah. I feel like you know you get when you come from the place when you're eighteen and you started making money on OnlyFans and mm-hmm. you're like you know your work ethics are not quite set in place mm-hmm. or like don't have like the point of reference of like well you know this other shit is way harder you yes. know or like or way more time consuming yes because then when you work for two or three hours and, and shooting you're like well it's not a big deal it's like kind of fun exactly you know, and easy yeah but when you know when you just like come and stuff people started throwing money at you you know yeah. it might not be like you might not be as excited and it's like, you know, be like, wow, well, well, you know, money comes easy to me. You know? Yeah, because so. one girl, I don't know her name and I don't want to say where it was, but uh, she was like shooting and it was like, how how long does it still going to take? Mm-hmm. Because I have plans after. Yeah. 
And I was like, what I mean, it's so annoying. You know? Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? You know, you're here for two hours now. Right. This is a normal job. Yeah. When I'm going to shoot a scene, I take the whole day off, yeah, of course, yeah. because it's my work day yeah, that day. You know, you know? and yeah. so like you said, I did normal jobs. I know what struggle that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm just thankful that I have this job. It's also very hard. There are days that I wake up at five to get yeah. to the shooting location, mm -hmm, shoot mm -hmm. all day and then drive back five hours to my yeah, hometown. Being in Europe, it's like things are more spread out. You know? Yes. Like in, in, you know, United States, it's mostly California or Miami, you know, yeah. people work there. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I have my house and people come through town. I don't have to go anywhere here. Yeah. I have to travel to Prague, Budapest, mm -hmm. you know, maybe Spain. And uh, yeah, but, you know, like at the end of the day, it's like you put your best foot forward because I remember from modeling, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, look, like I, I did these waking up early, go to the sets, you know, and stuff. But I sure wasn't sitting there. And I was like, OK, guys, let's go. Yes, it's gonna look yes. like, you know what I mean? Like I, I have some other shit to do after. Yeah, you're and, at your job. Yeah, you don't yeah. say at your office job also. Um, can we finish up here? Right? I, I'm having a nail appointment right. later, you it's know? It's just like, I, you know, sometimes... Three hours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like, I, I sometimes I, I book people through agents and stuff, and I have friends with agents, and they tell me these kind of stories with girls, and I'm like, damn, dude, like, it yeah. doesn't have to be that hard, you know? Yes. It's like, or, you know, people get in a fight with their with their boyfriend, and then they don't show up at a job after, yeah, you know? Yeah, I'm like, oh my God. Or they got wasted the night before, and they just, yes. like, I cannot do it, you mm -hmm. know? Like, and I'm like, damn, you know, like... Time and place, right? Yeah. It's like, I am, but... I would never go out and party until the morning when I know I have a shooting tomorrow. Yeah. Because it's like you have to go to your job. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's also a physical job. Right, you, right, right. You can't be tired yeah. because sometimes, and you know, at professional productions, you shoot sometimes one scene that's cutted like 30 minutes, yeah. but you shoot it for five or six hours. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's so much more footage and angles and stuff yes. for the final edit. And live and this and that you know, and even, you have to be fit I, I gotta say like here in Europe like when we do these content traits and like you know the, the, our own movies people when they say they show up they'll show up in US they yeah. can tell you like that they will show up uh -huh. and they and you can tell them the night before and you can ask them in the morning and they, they will flake on you oh for a variety God. of reasons. So my <laughs> friend, uh, he's a big, uh, you know, actor. He just moved to the United States and he yeah. always book person per day. Yeah. And I was telling him, man, you know, you need to start booking like two or three girls per yes. day because one or two will flake. Yeah. And he's like, no, in Europe, they all show up. And I'm like, yeah, in Europe, they will. Yeah, no, but in America. Because <laughs> their argument, like, you know, is sometimes like, well, you know, I show up on an agency shoot because they give me X amount of money. Mm -hmm. And then you try to be like, but this this clip can make you more money in the long run. Yeah. But everybody's sprinting and making the cash up front. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, if I were you, I would rather show up on the on the on the content trade because you yes. at least own it and you can own it for years to come. Yeah. You know? And I, I mean, like, look, I never flake on people, you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't think once, you know, yeah. I mean? because I was just like set everything up and people show up usually at my place or stuff but yeah yeah i mean i yeah. also i would never flake on someone i would when something comes up or i'm sick i would say listen i'm sick right i can't come right, yes right. i'm so sorry but i would never just not show up it goes back to the work ethics right yes and it goes back to how much money can you make it's like well yeah. how how are you you know it's like sometimes people like they shoot you know that shoot for a long time they they might not do they might not do a lot of collabs or, or stuff because they make so much money on OnlyFans or they have a big Twitch account or like YouTubes and stuff. So that, that mm. obviously helps. But yeah. I still think that when you give somebody a award, you should yeah. show up, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I guess, again, it comes back to who you are, you know? Yeah. Tell us on which sites do you post your videos? So I post on Pornhub mostly, mm -hmm. uh, OnlyFans, mm -hmm. Manivit, Sheer, X Videos. You can check it out here. Here's the link to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like I gotta say that people that miss on Pornhub, you know, like they they don't understand where the traffic and where the money's at, you know. Yeah. Because it's like you might give some something for free to the fans, but if it's good, they will come back and they will check on your privates as well, you know. Um, what are your private accounts? 
uh, like on uh, like a social media? Yeah, right? social media. Well, Tommy Wood XXX fan is my uh, Twitter, and Thomas Kolodik, which is my real name, it's on uh, it's on Instagram and Thomas Kolodik on YouTube. This is the thing. I'm like Tommy Wood, but I'm also Thomas Kolodik because mm-hmm. I was a model. So. It's all here, yeah. so, <laughs> so you can check it out. Yeah, you know, like it's it's kind of like the duality of things, mm-hmm. but I think I'm blending to be the one person now. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. It yeah. was so nice talking to you. You guys, <laughs> you guys can check out his pages you can check out his videos and everything mm-hmm. so yeah let's see where the give me the thumbs up to. guys yeah <laughs> give him the thumbs up and if you like this interview and want to see more you can subscribe to my channel and yeah give us a like <laughs> see you on the next one bye bye <laughs> thank you for watching this video till the end if you liked it leave a thumbs up and also if you want to see more videos like this you can subscribe to my channel. Also, here you can find my latest video and here you can see the rest of my channel. Also, if you want to follow me on social media, it's linked in the description below. And also, not just my social media, but also my very private videos. Till next time!